Blessings, namaste, and love, everyone. I am spiritualist, psychic, astrologer, and medium, Ray Seti. Once again, I thank you for this opportunity for allowing me to share with you my astrological and spiritual insights. And this uh, video, we are looking to the month of February 2022. Now, as I've mentioned in many videos uh, before, about three months before an eclipse season, we are being offered to prepare for what will be presented to us at the time of the eclipses. Our next eclipse season will be April going into May. So these lunations, the full and the new moons, are preparing us for what is coming in that time frame. I always suggest to just allow yourself to recognize where you feel uh, changes are being uh, presented to you, or rather where you're being offered the opportunity to welcome change. Eclipses always bring about uh, many, many changes. Um, and I always emphasize that it, an eclipse in and of itself, just like many of the lunations, if not all the lunations, they're not, they are not necessarily negative or positive in and of themselves. They bring to form all that we set in motion up until the time of an event. For example, a full moon brings to fruition all that we've set in motion up until the full moon. The uh, a lunar eclipse, because it's a high, highly energized, concentrated, um, amped up full moon, brings to culmination, brings to form that which has been in motion for longer periods of time. So as I said, three months prior to the eclipse season, we are offered the opportunity to prepare for the coming eclipses, especially the solar eclipse, because a solar eclipse, it's a new moon, so it's a major new beginning. So at least three months, we are offered the opportunity to prepare for that event. And as, as always, um, how it will apply for you on a personal level, it's really dependent upon where the lunations uh, fall into your chart. So in these videos, I can also offer some general suggestions as to how to prepare for what's coming during the eclipse season. So first and foremost, I always suggest allow yourself to recognize where you feel changes are unfolding for you. Also, if you are desiring to really embark upon significant new beginnings, we we be, we are inspired to energize and set that energy motion at the time of the solar eclipse. So employ these opportunities now to really begin to f reflect on long-term new beginnings as well as what would be necessary on your part to prepare for the new beginning to make it happen. So on February 1st, we have our new moon in the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign that represents great change, progressive thinking. It's the sign of the humanitarian, the one who is very instrumental in bringing about great change. I always em emphasize and inspire us to recognize how every one of us has the potential to be an instrument of great change. It was Gandhi who inspired us to embrace the concept of being the change we desire to see in the world. So at this new moon, what I would suggest is to reflect on what you desire to observe as great change in the outside world. And as always, whenever we set these intentions in motion, we uh, in, entwine them with the energy, or rather the intention, excuse me, of the highest good for all concerned. Remember, the universe inspires us to recognize that all things to be win-win situations. You know, spiritually, universally, there really is no win or lose when we allow ourselves to observe all things from that place of love. We're not here in this human form to compete with one another. We're here to inspire one another, to really encourage, to support one another throughout this human experience and it doesn't mean that one has to win and one has to lose remember in the, in in spirit there is only a win win situation the aquarius element inspires us to really recognize that within ourselves and to recognize this as a universal understanding and knowing and to always set the intentions in motion for the highest good of all concern as well as win win situations Aquarius is also the element that represents genius thinking. Every one of us has the potential to tap into genius levels thinking, and it's really not specific to one thing or another. 
For example, if you are challenged with receiving a solution to something which may perhaps challenge you, when we go into that place of meditation and we quiet the mind, we tap into the potential to receive alternative, abstract, out-of-the-box thinking solutions to any challenge which may be presented to us. That experience right there, that is genius level thinking. Meditation is an auspicious opportunity to really connect with those levels of thinking. The Aquarius mindset, as I said, thinks unconventionally. It's also the one that represents astrology, metaphysics. If you are desiring to embark upon any alternative, perhaps metaphysical understandings, teachings, schoolings, learnings, whatever that might be, this Aquarius new moon is the auspicious opportunity to begin such unconventional, if you will, learnings and understandings. Uh, we have Saturn very in, in close proximity to the uh, new moon within a few degrees. Saturn is also in Aquarius. Wherever, San, wherever Saturn transits in a chart, whether it's the houses or the sign, Saturn strengthens and solidifies. And being in the sign of Aquarius, uh, Saturn is strengthening that humanitarian level of knowing of brotherhood and oneness of all, that we really are all one and there, that we are not separate from one another. This new moon is another auspicious opportunity to really encode that knowing of universal oneness within yourself. And and since Saturn is, is present, uh, Saturn represents our long-term goals, our business endeavors. Perhaps if you're desiring to embark upon a humanitarian business effort, if you will, or perhaps some sort of an unconventional uh, business venture that really would inspire you or require you rather to march to the beat of your own drum and pursue the unconventional path, the road less traveled. This uh, new moon is an opportunity to begin those endeavors or if you're not clear as to what might that might be for you and you desire to have such experiences, this new moon is a time to receive that abstract alternative knowing regarding such pursuits. And as I said, with Saturn, you know, Saturn, all, all planets, all planets and all signs have their purpose. They serve a greater purpose. They have positive and uh, negative, not necessarily when I use the term negative, it doesn't mean necessarily bad. Uh, in as much as they are different vibrational frequencies, negative, positive, we refer to different, various different levels of vibrational frequencies. You know, Saturn strengthens, it inspires us to become very disciplined, very determination. Saturn connects with longevity. Saturn is a very strong uh, constitution. It can at times cause us to feel weighed down, feel as though we have the weight of the world on our shoulders. And that, that's really an opportunity to just step back a little bit and to slow down and to perhaps recognize if you have really taken on excessive responsibilities, it's now time to create those balances because Saturn also represents balancing. Uh, Saturn represents karma. Karma, as I've said in many times before, it's not necessarily reward or punishment in as much as it's an experience of a balance of power, a balance of energy. Uh, when Saturn transits the sign of Libra, Libra being the sign of balance, uh, it's it's, it's referred to being in what we refer to as its exaltation. When a planet is in a sign where it's, it's where it is exalted, it's in a place where it can demonstrate its greatest potential. And what I'm emphasizing with Saturn is creating balance. You know, there have been um, a tremendous amount of imbalances in the outside world. So as we go through this time specifically, uh, February, March, April time frame, leading up to the next eclipse season, we can observe how the universe, how nature will be creating much necessary balances in the outside world. Remember, that experience is a correction. Not necessarily bad, good, but what is necessary. Uh, remember, just as nature innately creates a balance, we are inspired to always create balances wherever there may be imbalances in our lives. So we will observe much balances being reestablished 
in the outside world, especially leading up to the next eclipse season, as well as many great truths, many higher understandings being revealed to us. That Aquarius energy connects with Revelations and the Apocalypse. And again, as I've also said many times, uh, when we when we uh, touch upon the experience of Revelations and the, po- the Apocalypse, it does not represent or indicate destruction it's a time of revealing greater truths higher knowings and one of the greatest truths being revealed to every one of us during these times is the truth of our greatest human potential and that is an experience that is very very personal and very specific to each one of us i've always inspired us to recognize that we all have great potential how we demonstrate that and how long it will require for us to get to that point of realization is really dependent upon us. So one, one more suggestion regarding this new moon. Allow yourself the opportunity to awaken to some of your greatest potential. Now, on February 4th, Mercury will be moving direct. Mercury has been retrograde for about three weeks on February 4th. Fourth, it will move direct. And as I've said in the past, remember, not until Mercury moves past the point at which it progressed retrograde are we completely out of the retrograde influences. And that experience, I believe, will be on February 24th. At February 24th, Mercury will move past the point at which it moved retrograde, which was actually at 10 degrees of Aquarius. Uh, as it as it was retrograde in Aquarius, it's it was another opportunity to really reflect upon our ability and our potential to bring about great change for ourselves and others. And as Mercury continues to pick up speed, all that which we reflected upon during the Mercury retrograde, because Mercury retrograde is a time to reflect. All that we have meditated on during that time, the clarity will start coming together for us as Mercury picks up speed. And once it moves past that point on uh, February 24th, we we, sh- we could certainly experience many of those aha moments. Also on February 4th at exactly 2.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Sun and Saturn will come together and form like a new moon alignment. Whenever two elements come together, it's an experience similar to exact or just like a new moon. On a new moon, the Sun and the Moon come together. Whenever two other elements come together, it begins a new cycle of experience. Once a year, the Sun connects with uh, the outer the outer planets and they form this exact conjunction if you will on february 4th the sun and saturn come together actually at 15 degrees of aquarius and wherever the sun connects the sun energizes look at how much energy is generated from the sun so at this this specific sun saturn connection it's energizing those saturn elements long-term goals business endeavors if you have been striving towards beginning a new business endeavor the saturn sun conjunction is an auspicious opportunity to do that if you're not at that point where you're about to really embark upon starting a new business endeavor that's an opportunity to perhaps plant the seeds in motion to really pursue and bring to form those endeavors uh and With Saturn, as I said, it also connects and represents long-term goals. So that Saturn-Sun conjunction is an opportunity to energize, plant the seeds for specifically for long-term goals, especially if those long-term goals are connected with humanitarian endeavors and efforts. On February 16th at... Uh, 1156 a.m. Eastern Standard Time whenever I offer times they I do offer them in Eastern Time we have our next full moon and our full moon on February 16th is in the sign of Leo it's actually at almost exactly 28 degrees of Leo you've heard me discuss many times in when the Sun transits the sign of Leo especially specifically during the early August time frame, we have the opportunity of what we refer to as the lion's 
gate portal when we are at a time to strengthen in fortify um energize our creative potential every one of us has the potential and the opportunity to tap into creativity and as i've said creativity is not specific to art and music creativity is multifaceted part of the many reasons why we've come into this human form is to recognize and demonstrate ourselves as creative beings in every moment of every day if we allow ourselves to really recognize honor and acknowledge all the thoughts uh, the intentions the words that we've cast and set in motion we would be we would become very aware of how we create our realities this full moon is another opportunity to awaken to your creative potential as well as your potential of being a creative being you know that is very much part of what I refer to as recognizing that we are all the masters of our destiny the Leo element represents kings it represents as I said great creativity uh, the creative process it represents children uh, it also represents conception as well all creative experiences so at this full moon if in any sort of way you're still struggling if you will or challenged to recognize yourself as being creative allow yourself at this full moon to awaken to that 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 wonderful great phenomenal potential um within yourselves uh that that Leo uh, full moon is the opposite of Aquarius remember a full moon is always the opposite of 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 whatever sign the Sun is transiting so the Sun is transiting Aquarius this sign Leo is the opposite of the full moon with that Leo Aquarius polarity I always use the analogy or the metaphor that Leo represents the heart and Aquarius represents the circulation of the blood you know by allowing ourselves to really recognize our creative potential in our own very unique way we do circulate great change in the outside world you know we bring about and bring forth great change all stemming from our creative desires and creative pursuits allowing yourself to be a creative being remember quite often whenever it is that we are engaging and having experience that we enjoy creatively as I said we are demonstrating our God self if you will when we are creating we are very much at an elevated high vibrational experience think of it this way when you allow yourself to really enjoy a creative experience your being at a high vibrational level and by being at that level those are the vibrational frequencies that you are generating to the outside world and bringing about great change do not discredit your potential to be so even if it may seem to be in a small way there are no small pursuits whenever we address anything on a spiritual level and again as I said that's representative of all of this is, is connected with our full moon on February 16th and the exact time is 11 56 a.m. also remember the full moon it's an auspicious opportunity to clear cleanse and release if it resonates with you perhaps at that full moon conduct a, a meditation a ritual a candle ceremony again whatever resonates with you to just release and just clear away whatever whatever may no longer be serving a purpose for you and allow yourself to really recognize and embrace and to become aware allow the universe to reveal to you some of your greatest potential especially as a creative being now one final point on February 18th the Sun will transit into the sign of Pisces and that will take place again on February 18th at 11 40 43 a.m. Eastern Standard Sign the Sun transits into the sign of Pisces Pisces the is a water sign the water signs are most connected and representative of the psychic 
faculties, the intuitiveness. Pisces represents great compassion. And being ruled by Neptune, which Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, Pisces also represents uh, the great artists and great musicians when we talk about creativity. But it also represents the subconscious and that which exists beneath the surface. When the sun transits into the sign of Pisces, you know, in the wintertime we are inspired to really to, to go within and to just reflect to plant seeds, to germinate the seeds. Actually, in the wintertime, it's a time of germination. And in the spring, if we've done so properly, we will see the seedlings of what has been germinated through the wintertime. When the sun is in the sign of Pisces, because it's, it's, it's right before Aries, which really begins uh, the astrological wheel. It's a time more so than any other time during the year to just to go within to really connect with and recognize what might be dwelling beneath the surface in your subconscious mind. It's also an opportunity to really to go within and to perhaps release anything that is deep-seated within yourself that many times doesn't serve a purpose. Many times we don't understand how there are energies uh, dwelling in the background, kind of operating behind the scenes that we don't always allow ourselves to recognize how they may influence us many times in a negative way. For example, many times when we're working on computers, there are there's much going on behind the scenes that's working in the background that you're not necessarily consciously aware of. But those processes are in some sort of way, either negative or in a positive way, really contributing to a certain outcome. So many times, you know what, when we are challenged to really bring to form or achieve certain things in our lives, we don't recognize how sometimes the subtle programs that are operating in the background of our subconscious are, are working against us. And many times it does require great courage to see what that might be. So one of the things I suggest as a sun transit the sign of Pisces, more so than any other time during the course of the year, allow yourself the time to really, really, really go within and let yourself, or rather allow spirit to show you what might be working in the background that may be working against you so that you can have the courage to see it and then correct it. Once again, everyone, I thank you for this opportunity. You know, every month there are so many uh, alignments astrologically that take place even sometimes on a daily basis if you just kind of think about how quickly the moon moves it's constantly creating some sort of alignment with something somewhere out there and you know in in I, I only have an opportunity to really touch upon just some of the very very few things that are taking place during the month so I, I just I it is my desire that this inspires you to use some of these suggestions so that you can really bring about some of your greatest desires. Remember, there's a lot of things going on astrologically. These are just some of the few points that I'd like to touch upon during this video. You know, whenever we meet, especially during a private session, we can, we can elaborate a little bit more on specifics. Uh, as, as I've always said, you know, how something will manifest for you on a personal level is really specific to where it all lands in your astrological chart. So these are just, you know, points of reference to give you a starting point with your creative process as well. So just remember, there are many things that are going on right there or out, out, in, out in the world. So, you know, I always suggest let yourself, allow yourself to be guided by spirit. If you're clear in your being, grounded with the energy of the earth, spirits will certainly clearly guide you. Once again, I thank you. I'm spiritualist, psychic astrologer, and medium Ray Seti. I will see everyone again very, very soon. Many blessings.